Frequency Podcast Network. Stories that matter, podcasts that resonate. If you heard it when it happened, you definitely remember it. Because this one was everywhere. Mr. McMillan, would you like 30 seconds more? Allow me to introduce myself. I represent the rent that's too damn high party. People working eight hours a day and 40 hours a week to some a third job. Women can't afford to take care of their children, feed their children breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You should be aware that that was more than 13 years ago. And yes, it makes me feel old too. But more importantly, the damn rent is now higher than ever. While that's not entirely surprising, the cost of everything, after all, is higher. The rent in many places in Canada is all but unaffordable now. And it's not like landlords needed help to jack these rents, but they're getting it. The U.S. Department of Justice is investigating software that helps landlords go higher than ever before when setting their prices. They allege that it is basically digital price fixing. And it's not just happening in America. So if you're wondering why the rent is so damn high, just know that it's now got AI helping it. And if we don't do something about this now, it won't just be the rent. I'm Jordan Heath-Rawlings. This is The Big Story. Martin Lukacs is the managing editor at The Breach, where he has covered uh, this issue, well, the issue of rents in Canada, for a long time. Uh, and they're too high, right, Martin? <laughs> too damn high. <laughs> I played that meme in the opening because, you know, that was um, 13 years ago now. Oh, wow. And they've only got higher. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And now they have help. And that's what you're here to talk with us about today. And maybe you can start uh, by explaining the software at the center of all of this. What exactly is YieldStar? So it's a piece of real estate software put out by a Texas-based company called RealPage that essentially allows companies, in this case, uh, corporate landlords, to fix housing prices to essentially form what the U.S. government is now calling a housing cartel. So I think, you know, listeners probably have some imaginative sense of what, of how price fixing and collusion be between companies used to work. You know, it would happen in smoke-filled rooms or CD resorts. Now there's an app for it. So essentially what RealPage provides companies through Yieldstar is a subscription-based service where landlords provide proprietary confidential information that then gets collated, harnessed, and fed into an al algorithmic uh, software that spits out rental prices for landlords, recommendations that are consistently above market prices. And what the DOJ, the Department of Justice in the U.S., is alleging is that this has allowed companies to form essentially a housing cartel that has majorly contributed to uh, increasing prices across the United States. So the DOJ uh, is investigating and alleging, but at the moment, is this currently legal? Certainly what the Department of Justice alleges is that it is not. The D.C. Attorney General, so basically the Department of Justice, as well as I think more than a half dozen attorney generals um, in states across the country, are suing RealPage. And what one attorney um, in D.C. has said is that essentially they have found a modern way to violate century-old antitrust laws through systematic coordination of rental housing prices. The old-fashioned way of dealing with rental properties is, you know, if you're a landlord, you make an educated guess about what the market can bear. You know, maybe you're calling your buddy down the street or across town to ask, like, what he's charging for his apartments. But this allows companies a kind of next-level uh, coordination. So basically subscribers to this program, and in some jurisdictions uh, in the United States, 80% of a city will have its landlord subscribe to this service. So they essentially input 
all kinds of really sensitive information like signed leases, renewal offers, rental applications, occupancy rates. And that all gets fed into this system, which you know spits out these recommendations, which it promises are going to be three to seven percent above uh, market rate. So you know that's a <laughs> it's a sizable amount, and they wouldn't be able to extract these kind of sums if not for the collusion that they are permitted to engage in through this uh, app. So says the U.S. government. And you mentioned, you know, centuries old kind of antitrust laws. That's because I guess if corporate landlords were doing it the old fashioned way, um, like the smoke filled room or the the seedy resort and they all got together to set rental prices, that would be in violation. Right. That's pretty clear. Is that the idea? And the, the change now is that it's all just happening up in the cloud and an algorithm is behind it. Precisely. So that brings me to my next question, which is. This is an American company based in Texas. The filing is the American Department of Justice. You mentioned some places 80% of American landlords are using this. Is it being used in Canada? Well, so as we discovered through our latest report, it is in fact being used in Canada. And we discovered through um, a case in Toronto, in Weston, in greater Toronto area, uh, there's a few properties where the tenants have been engaged in a rent strike uh, for upwards of a year and a half now where they've been withholding their rent in protest of the high high rents. And they have a case that's going through the tenant landlord board. And in that case, the company Dream Unlimited, their property managers filed an affidavit. And in the affidavit, they admitted to using Yieldstar to calculate market rents, as they put it, uh, for any given apartment. And we looked at those documents, and it was interesting to discover that yield they're using Yieldstar, and Yieldstar is essentially recommending 7 to 54% uh, increases per apartment. Now, what was interesting is that the company wasn't using the high range of those rents. They have themselves been capping rents at 9 to 10%. Uh, which is still, you know, quite high. It's three times higher than the allowable amount as per rent control in Ontario. Uh, but nine, nine or ten percent year over year, the last two years is a very significant sum. If this is three times above the rental regulations, how is it permitted? Well, so in this case, the building in question at twenty twenty two John Street has no limit because. Premier Doug Ford removed controls on any rental units units built or occupied after November 2018. And this building was first occupied in 2019. So one of the concerns of the tenants uh, union is that with no limits, who knows how high the rents could go if you know the company continues to take recommendations from this app if they start taking the higher end recommendations. So that's a big concern. Um, now, one of the, the ways that Yieldstar responds is they say, oh, okay, these are just recommendations, but the very architects of the app have been a lot more honest about the kind of psychological push that the app also encourages. Give me some examples. So the, the guy who was instrumental to designing the app once said that landlords have, quote, too much empathy, end quote, compared to algorithmic pricing software. And, you know, on the website, it's now been removed, but previously on RealPage's uh, website, there were testimonials from, you know, landlords and property managers. And there was one director at a U.S. property manager that had this line that was, I think, just perfectly instructive. He said... Quote, the beauty of Yieldstar is that it pushes you to go places that you wouldn't have gone if you weren't using it. So I think of it as a kind of, little, you know, a, a devil's landlord advocate on your on your right shoulder, just whispering in, in your ear, you know, go higher, go higher, go higher. And when you asked uh, the rental corporation in question for this building, at least, about Yieldstar, um, what did they say if they even responded? Well, they didn't provide a comment, but uh, what they did do was fire the property manager 
who admitted in the affidavit to using Yieldstar, which seems to me about as good an admission of guilt as you can get. So this is one building and one affidavit. Do we have a sense at all about how prevalent this software might be in Canadian rental markets? We have access to a proprietary database that shows that at least 12 other companies whose total revenue amounts to $5 billion uh, a year are using it. And currently we are trying to map out all the other properties in the country that are using it. The truth is we don't really know. Even this proprietary database we have access to is probably very limited. We do know that some of these companies have been using Yieldstar as far back as 2013, 2014. So, you know, and the and the the multi you know family unit rental system in Canada is quite consolidated and concentrated. So, you know, it would not surprise me if we're only scratching the surface in terms of understanding how widely it's used. You spoke about the Department of Justice case. Uh, is there anything like that happening in Canada? Is there any action or concern about this um, from any level of government, I guess, up here? So the tenant union who's organizing tenants at these properties of Dream Unlimited, the York Southwest and Tenant Union, they have been pushing for an investigation by the Competition Bureau here in Canada, uh, which is essentially a law enforcement agency that has the ability to recommend criminal charges to the government. And for instance, you know, your listeners might remember that they were at the center of the charges that were levied against the Westons, Loblaw, and many of the um, grocery giants in this country for, you know, their involvement in bread price fixing. So, it's been interesting to see the NDP on the heels of our investigation are also now calling for a competition bureau investigation. They wrote the head of the bureau about a week and a half ago. You know, the competition bureau may very well have already started an investigation. We wouldn't know because they do it secretly. So I think that's what it's going to take to really unveil the degree to which companies here are, you know, using Yieldstar. Can you tell us a little more about the DOJ investigation and what we know from it and just kind of like where it's at in the process? They have filed this lawsuit in late August where they are essentially suing them. And as far as I can tell, their ambition is to shut down the ability of RealPage to offer this subscription service. And of course, I think like when push comes to shove, Politics are naturally involved and, you know, conceivably they could settle with the company and, you know, maybe it would involve fines, maybe it would involve uh, just a, you know, a tap on the wrist, but it definitely has the, the potential to be, you know, a really precedent setting case in cracking down on the use of algorithmic price fixing, which isn't just happening in housing. It's happening um, in industries um, across America and Canada. That's the other thing I was going to ask you about is like, what do we know about the scale of algorithmic price fixing? Sure, not just in the rental market, but also just like, is Yieldstar the only software that is doing this? There's definitely others. In fact, there's another one called Yardi as well, about which very little reporting has been done to date in Canada. So I, I really think we're, you know, we're in uncharted territory. And I think there is a real onus on our government to investigate and crack down, um, you know, taking the lead of these tenant union groups and, and, and journalists who are working on this. Um, but yeah, it's uncharted territory across the board. I mean, we know it's being used in, the grocery industry, we know it's being used in gas pricing as well. It really is central to, uh, increasingly central to the, you know, corporate profiteering of the 21st century. And even on a micro level, when we talk about things like digital uh, menu boards at fast food chains, I don't know if you remember that huge, huge discourse around uh, Wendy's potentially doing like surge pricing for hamburgers, right? Like, exactly. Uh, is this something, I guess, that 
can be tackled piece by piece like this with the DOJ going after this software company? Or is this something that governments like need to wrestle with in the big picture? I think that's that's exactly it. Like we're we're overdue for a reckoning, a political reckoning where, you know, we really question the the way that I think, you know, under the radar for many people, capitalism is really harnessing the power of AI to engage in the kinds of, you know, collusion and coordination that would have been the, you know, the dream of capitalists of the 20th and 19th centuries, um, who had to go to far, far greater lengths to do this kind of uh, coordination. It is amazing to think that 13 years ago, we had the rent is too damn high. And now AI says that the rent is actually too damn low. (laughs) That's a really great way of putting it. Martin, thank you so much for this. Thanks for having me. Martin Lukacs. Managing Editor of The Breach. That was The Big Story. For more, you can head to thebigstorypodcast.ca. You would be shocked, I know, to realize that we cover rents a lot on this program because they are so damn high. You can leave us feedback or just send us some of your rental horror stories by writing to us at hello at thebigstorypodcast.ca or calling us and leaving a voicemail at 416-935-5935. You can listen to The Big Story wherever you get your podcasts, which now includes Seeker, S-E-E-K-R, and, of course, includes your smart speakers when you ask them to play The Big Story podcast. Thanks for listening. I'm Jordan Heath-Rawlings. We'll talk tomorrow.